Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's much better. <laughs> All right, my name is Melissa, and I'm here to represent the Pacific Asia Travel Association, or PADA. For those of you who are not familiar with PADA, um, here are some key points that you can uh, remember about us. One is that we are one of the long-standing membership associations in the world. We've been up and running since 1951. So we've been doing this for quite some time now, for over 65 years. Two is that we are essentially a membership association, but what sets us apart from all the associations out there is that we cater to both the public and the private sector. And we bring them together in partnership to enhance the value, the quality, and the sustainable growth of travel in Asia Pacific and beyond. Third is that throughout the years, we've been known for more or less three things. One is that we are, we're known for our events. You might have heard of Pata Travel Mart. That's one of our signature events um, and one that we've been organizing for the past 40 years now. Two is that we are known for our advocacy work. We take our responsibility in representing and protecting the interests of our stakeholders very seriously. And third, we are really big on knowledge sharing. Um, at PADA, we are really fortunate to be always in good company. We're surrounded by industry experts, um, thought leaders, innovators, disruptors, people who are passionate about what they do and passionate about the industry and passionate about sharing their expertise and their knowledge to the community members and to the industry at large. And so in the same spirit, I'm really happy to be here today to share with you what we have learned from experience, from our peers, and from PADA community members. But before, but before I dive into my uh, presentation, I just wanted to pose a simple question to all of you. And this question is something that I often ask myself, especially working in this field, in this industry. And the question is, why do you travel? For me, my most treasured um, memories growing up always involved travel, whether it's traveling to my favorite places or somewhere new. And even now, as I raise my child, who's five years old, uh, my favorite memories with him is, is us of traveling together and seeing the world in his eyes. Um, and I think this is not exclusive to me. I think a lot of people can actually relate to this. And it's because I always believe that travel is intrinsic to man's need to discover the world he lives in, to experience new things, to feed his curiosity, and ultimately collect unique and authentic experiences because it's these experiences that make our lives enriching. According to Trip Barometer, 69% of travelers from all age groups are planning to try something new. And according to Focusrite, 55% of leisure travelers only get to travel one to two times a year. So there's really a lot of thought that goes into these travel and the, in these trips. But with the proliferation of the internet and social media, this need to experience the world we live in, to experience new things, it's no longer a personal pursuit. It's not something we just want to experience for ourselves. And so we share our experiences so that other people who are not there with us can, can experience it as well. So they, we share our experiences online so that people can experience or live vicariously through us. And just to give you a little bit of a digital snapshot, there is over 7 billion people in this planet and more than half of them now uses a smartphone. More than half of web traffic comes from mobile phones. 4.92 billion to be exact. And 34% or 2.56 billion comes from mobile social media users. In Asia Pacific alone, more than 1.5 billion now uses social media on a monthly basis with 95% accessing platforms via mobile devices. That's the highest ratio in the world. So what are people doing in social networking sites anyway, aside from stalking people? Um, they create and share stuff. And why? According to Adweek, it's motivated by four things. Discovery, wellness, status, and fun. And what do they share? Pictures, pictures, and even more pictures. The most common are famous landmarks, urban hidden gems, parks, some body of water, 
and good old Mother Nature, and the rest are broken down to selfies, uh, sunsets, living the high life, and so on and so forth. So the challenge to us travel professionals is how are we going to convince or influence travelers to choose our destination over the other? How are we going to entice them to experience our culture, our heritage, to live our story and integrate it into theirs? So this is what I want to talk about today. The following slides will showcase destinations who have taken on the challenge, paired it against their creativity and resources, and ultimately did it right. First up is the Greater Mekong subregion, which comprises of six countries, covers 2.6 million square kilometers, and is home to over 300 million people. Now the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office is responsible for promoting the Mekong region as a single travel destination. So with that in mind, they came up with a campaign called Mekong Moments. And what it is, is essentially a visual consumer uh, marketing campaign and travel inspirational platform that enables the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office to promote the Mekong region as a single travel destination. Before I move on, I'd like you to watch this video. the hashtag Mekong moments via social media, they were able to encourage user-generated content that featured the many unique experiences to be had in the Mekong region. And these experiences were uh, shared by travelers from all over the world. In return, these travelers got the chance to win prizes from social media contests run by participating companies. Now, the thousands of experiences shared via hashtag Mekong moments on social media has then inspired other travelers to follow suit and to visit the Mekong region and try the off-the-beaten track sites and attractions in the Mekong. Mekong Moments was not only able to promote the destination, but it also built social media capacity or social media marketing capacity, um, especially to local and small enterprises. It gave them access to free websites. It enabled them to run digital campaigns. It also um, and, and also made them generate direct business through social commerce. This campaign was a huge success, and in 2017 in ITB Berlin, they were given an award um, for innovation. Another example of destination marketing done right is that of Korea Tourism Organization's Korea Visits You campaign. Now, in 2012, Korea was named the 20th most visited country in the world and the sixth most visited country in Asia. This thanks in part to the popularity of K-pop, or the Korean wave, the number of tourist arrivals continue to rise. Through the, South, uh, through the Korea Visits You campaign, KTO not only wanted to show their appreciation to travelers who have visited Korea, but they also wanted to encourage um, people to share their experiences in Korea by just using five hashtags. By doing so, they were able to showcase the unique offerings of Korea divided into different categories that may pick the traveler's interest. They also made it easier for people to have access to information, um, especially if they're considering to travel to Korea, and they made these information accessible in social networking sites. KTO capitalized on a valuable insight, and that is that people nowadays tend to search for information for their next destination in social networking sites. The result is over 7 million people from 135 countries visited the campaign site during the campaign period. Nearly 200,000 posts were generated with the five campaign hashtags, 
and there was a 20% increase in Korea trip related hashtags. So what's the takeaway in this? People seek out experiences that they can relate to, that they can imagine being a part of. Every destination has a story to tell, but how and where does the traveler fit in? One postcard of Langkawi does not a holiday make, but a thousand images from different sources, different people, different personal creative expressions, that's what connects with us. That's what speaks to us. When you understand that people are basing their decisions on more than just amazing photos, but real personal experiences, then your focus is that of your curator, to set the perfect stage for moments worth sharing. Do you guys recognize these people? If not, you better familiarize yourselves because according to Forbes, these are the top 10 influencers in travel, which were featured in their top influencers list. Not convinced? Maybe this next slide would. The total reach of these influencers amount to over 17 million. Now the next example I will show you recognize the power of influencers and use them to their advantage. As part of their latest brand campaign, the Hong Kong Tourism Board got some help from influencers to help them promote the different experiences to be had in Hong Kong. So they reached out to local celebrities like Sean Lau, Karina Lam, uh, Michael Wong, and even to social media influencers like Taiwanese model Rima and YouTube sensations, the Fung Brothers. And here is a clip of um, the Fung Brothers trip to Hong Kong. Aren't you guys, this is gonna be Fung Rose in Hong Kong like you've never seen. <laughs> LAX to HKG. Whoa. We just landed in Hong Kong. Now, we've been here several times before, but I feel like in this trip, it's gonna be something like we've never seen. Let's go. Normally, when we come to Hong Kong, we're with our parents, so we're doing traditional things. But today in this video, we are only showing you the hottest and trendiest spots that you've never heard about, but you need to see. First, okay. So, aside from featuring all this inspiring and visually appealing content, these influencers also ask their followers to share their experience in Hong Kong by simply using a one-line caption, I never knew, and use the hashtag Discover Hong Kong in their posts, whether it's a photo or a video. And the result is a treasure trove of experiences in Hong Kong that were featured in the campaign site and in Hong Kong Tourism Board's social media pages. Next is digital influencers are not limited to individuals. Sometimes it can be brands. In 2016, the Philippine Department of Tourism partnered with creative agency um, Beautiful Destinations, and they came up with a campaign called It's More Fun in the Philippines with Beautiful Destinations. Now, the aim of the, of the campaign is to sustain the positive image of the Philippines and to raise its global awareness. Now, Beautiful Destinations, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're the largest, they're the brand behind the largest um, community, travel community in social media today with over 15 million followers across 180 countries. And what they've done is they basically deployed a team to capture the beauty of the Philippines. And here is the result. <laughs> Destinations posted real-time stories in Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, and aimed it at key target markets. And they were also able to provide the DOT with photo assets and video assets that the DOT can use in their advertising campaigns. 
Now the campaign was a success with millions of people wanting to know more about the Philippines. What's more interesting is the social, imp social media impact of this campaign. In Snapchat alone, they had 5 million Snapchat views. In Facebook, they had over 7 million audience reach. And in Instagram, they had over 11 million follower reach, over 1 million total video views, and over 1 million total likes. But what's more is the considerable impact of this campaign on traditional media. Over 30 local and international print, online, and broadcast outlets covered the campaign, which earned them millions of media impressions. Also, the, the Philippine DOT used the video and the photos from this campaign and their takeover of King's Cross in London, which amounted to even more exposure. So what's the takeaway in this? Don't be the only voice in promoting your destination. Let others speak for you. Next is, from one influencer to another, this example shows you that influencers don't have to have a million followers to be influential, which takes me to Western Australia. Western Australia always enjoyed the benefits of the mining boom, but in 2016, the mining boom weakened and tourism arrivals dropped. And so this posed a great challenge for Tourism Western Australia, because now they have limited budget compared to their competitors. And also, they had to persuade people to travel to Western Australia, which was more expensive, further away, and a lot more difficult to travel to. Also, Western Australia didn't really have key tourism um, draws. So with creativity, creativity and inspiration, Tourism Western Australia pulled together and turned their 2.6 Western Australia residents into the most powerful content team and brand experts. And the results exceeded expectations. Well, I'd always heard about the beaches in Margaret River and, you know, they really live up to their reputation. They're, they're beautiful and the wine, the food, and everything. I mean, the whole area is just spectacular. But there was this one thing, being 50 metres underground in this huge limestone cave and hearing nothing. <sighs> it was... Um... Just another day in WA. So Tourism Western Australia used real people to tell real stories about their destination, and they recognized their key local asset, which was the Western Australia residents. By doing so, they were able to expand their reach with credibility and generate more authentic user-generated content that had the full support of a community. So what's the takeaway in this? We are all drawn to authenticity. Every destination has a story to tell. But the story is best told by those who know it best, and that's their people. Now, my next example brings us to Argentina, to the city of Buenos Aires, to be exact. Now, the city of Buenos Aires currently restructured their tourism experience strategy, and so the new management wanted to look for innovative ways to present the information about the destination. They realized that to do it themselves, it will take a lot of money and a lot of their time. And so they reached out to a startup from Madrid called Smartvel. And this startup basically provided them with a solution that enabled them to enhance their website, also centralize all of the information that they have, and also promote tours organized by the city. It also provided with them a solution that was already compatible with their current infrastructure and one that was quick to develop and execute. And the solution is called BA Planner by Smartbell. The result is 10% or less than 10% bounce rate, increased um, average time on site, and increased in return visitors to the site. Also, they found a valuable insight, and that is 66% of visits were made outside of Buenos Aires during the inspirational phase of the trip and 34% were made in destination by locals and tourists. And this enabled them to take necessary steps to engage their audience better. And so on the second phase of their partnership with Smartvel, um, the city of Buenos Aires was one of the first tourism bureaus who launched a snap, uh, a, what do you call it, a chatbot, which provided up-to-date information on unique experiences on Buenos Aires. 
Now my next example is a bit of a personal example, actually. This is my first time in Taiwan. I've never been, but I've always heard good things. And so I was really excited to go to Taiwan. So I started researching on what to do. And um, before I knew it, this popped up on my Facebook feed. Um, as you can see, it shows me who of my friends have been to Taiwan, where did they go, what did they do, where did they stay. It's amazing, right? It's incredible. Also creepy at the same time because it feels like someone's watching you. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm not surprised that Facebook is doing this. Um, actually, this is part of Facebook's Explore feed. Um, and it's basically based on the stuff that you already like on Facebook and what is popular amongst your friends. It's relevant information that's curated especially for you. And like I said, I'm not surprised that a giant like Facebook is already doing this, suggesting travel experiences. And because it's based on your network, your, fa your friends, your family, and everything in your Facebook universe, this hits the mark on user-generated user content or user-driven content. And it's authentic because you have the word of mouth or recommendations from your friends. So what's the takeaway in this? The best thing about these technologies is that they're already pervasive. The appetite to engage is already there. You just need to use the right tools to start the conversation. To conclude, it's no news that we are living in an increasingly connected world. But sometimes the implica implications of this is not obvious. And so today we looked at some of the techniques and technologies that are allowing us to meet a very basic and persistent human drive, and that is to experience the world and to share those experiences. And now it seems our need to express ourselves is met with an infinite set of opportunities to explore, to document, and to share memories that make us who we are. I believe that travel is central to the human experience. And through our social network and the internet, we see and dream about the world more than ever before. And this presents a tremendous opportunity for all of us. This is something to be embraced. So let's all be part of it. Thank you. <laughs>